everybody. My name is Bernd Geck, leading the design services at Texas Instruments Freising. And I'm here to talk with you on the buck converter, mainly on a non-isolated DC-DC converter. Why we are talking on this? Of course, because I want to explain you the benefits of a DC-DC converter compared to a linear regulator. If we do a very simple calculation, 12 volt down to 5 volts at roughly 1 amp, we are ending up with a re linear regulator at 7 watts of power losses. If we are doing a properly designed DC-DC buck converter, we will end up at an efficiency of 95-96% roughly compared to 42% of the linear regulator means 300 milliwatts of power losses only at the DC-DC converter. So the benefit is efficiency of course, easy thermal management, size and weight. But of course, as you might know, there is no free lunch. There are some disadvantages. The main disadvantage is we have a chopper, a switch mode power supply may end up in EMI trouble if the layout is not properly designed or if we have some mistakes at the power stage. Today we are here to show you the main work, the on state, the off state of the buck converter. Let's start with the power stage. We need only five parts, one active part and a few passive parts and storage elements to do a buck power stage. At every DC-DC converter, we, know a l we need a low impedance source. This is our input capacitor, mainly a low ESR capacitor. We need a switch. We got a choke, storage choke. We got an output capacitor. And of course, we need our freewheeling diode. That's the basic principle of a buck converter. Here we got our input voltage, here we got our output, and it's a so-called step-down converter, means we are stepping down a high input voltage to a lower output voltage. Let's see the voltages and the currents. At first, we are switching on the high side MOSFET, we force a current across the inductor back to our input capacitor. If we open the switch, we have to take care that we are not cutting the current so our freewheeling diode starts to work. The current is forced by the inductor Passing the freewheeling diode. These are our two basic states of the buck converter, of the step down converter. Green, the on state. Red, the off state. Let's have a look at some voltages. Very easy. Here we got ground, we got an DC input voltage, we got an DC output voltage. There we will have no trouble. But here, here we got our switch node. Let's have a look at the switch node. During the on state of the converter, of course, we will have the input voltage at the switch node because the switch, the MOSFET, is closed. During the off state, the diode is conducting and minus the forward voltage, we will have here at the switch node. And again, switch is closed, on state again, and again, off state. That's the voltage at our switch node inside the buck converter. But how are the related currents looking? Very easy. We got a slope at the current caused by the inductance and inductance law. 
and the current will roughly look like this. And we are in a continuous mode, a so-called continuous conduction mode, because the current inside the inductor never drops to zero. But can we see the output voltage already? Yes, we can. Very simple. The output voltage in this converter is roughly like this. Because this area has to match this area. And by this equation, we immediately know the duty cycle of the buck converter. Very easy, very simple. It is output voltage divided by the input voltage. That's the duty cycle of our buck converter. Very easy, very handy. Inside our power stage, there is a very lossy element, the freewheeling diode. The forward voltage of this diode causes a voltage drop in a range 500, 600, 700 millivolts. And at a high current, the efficiency of our power stage will be very poor. So we have to replace this lossy element by another MOSFET called synchronous rectifier. This synchronous rectifier needs the right control and emulates the function of our freewheeling diode. That's an easy method to increase the efficiency of the bug power stage tremendous. The bandwidth of our bug converter, it's a forward topology, is pretty high. It's not limited by right half plane zero. It is just limited by the switching frequency and the gain bandwidth of our error amplifier. At the end of our presentation, there will be a link to an EVM of Texas Instruments. This EVM provides you further information and gives you the possibility to make first measurements on our buck converter. Our next session will be related to a boost converter, means how we can step up a voltage. If you have any further questions, please visit the Texas Instruments community. Thank you very much.